On this week's episode of Fishing 411 TV, Mark and Jake Romanek team up with Steve Lynch of Procure Bait Sets to test out a new walleye trolling tactic known as the Precision Trolling 50 Plus 2 Method. The 50 Plus 2 Method involves using snap weights to help get diving crankbaits to deeper depths. When it comes to trolling for walleye, there is no better proving grounds than Lake Erie. Jake, Mark, and Steve expand on the finer points of walleye trolling and also how to use natural scent products to tempt lethargic walleye into striking crankbaits. Steve, I would like you to have the honor of that first fish. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to clear this line out of the way here. Well, we're finally hooked up here this morning. We got Steve Lynch on the rod here for the first fish, and I'm clearing lines because we got lines everywhere today. <laughs> so, keep him coming slow and steady, Steve, and I'll get that board off for you. Okay. It's all yours, sir. All right, thank you. Then we're going to have a snap weight that's going to come up here in a little bit more. So just slow and steady on him, just like all you're right. doing. It should be fine. And then uh, about the time we get that other weight off there, then you'll, you should feel some life on the end of the line. All right. All right. Okay, not a big fish, but a fish. Yes, it is. All right, I'm going to jump ahead of you because i got to get a landing net, so. That's not too impressive. I think you can just swing him over the side yeah. here. That's not too impressive. <laughs> but you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. Is that your first Great Lakes walleye? That is my first Great Lakes no place walleye. put up from here, man. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that fish actually is legal, but uh, um, but by Lake Erie standards, he's a, um, let's just be honest, he's a, he's a touch on the small side. Yeah. <laughs> All right there, Steve. You can stay right where you're at and fight okay. that fish. Now to free up the back of the boat here a little bit. Do you need to clear the other rod? It's all, it all cleared. You're good, man. We'll take care of it. Well, the whole thing with, with inline planer board fishing is basically keep the boat moving is what we're trying to do. If we slow down, fish comes off. Okay. You know, and so slow, steady. Um, you'll notice that that planer board, I released it so it's, you can pull it in a little bit easier. And uh, when you get that board a little bit closer, um, Jake's going to jump up here and grab it off real fast. And uh, once that comes off, uh, then we'll continue to reel again until we get to the snap weight. We'll take that off. And then at that point, it's just you and Mr. Walleye. And I'm betting you it feels a little heavier than the first one. Yes, huh? it does. Yes. There we go. All right. There you go, Steve. You're good. Not bad, not bad. Feels a little heavier than the first one. That's good news. That's good news. Get that snap weight off, and then you'll start to feel a little bit more head shakes and such. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a good one, Steve. Steve, if you'll just holler off on the counter so I know how close he is. Uh, uh, 42. All right, we got a ways to go. We'll get excited when he gets to about 15. So. 12. Uh, 
Oh, oh I see him. Nice fish. A little closer. A little closer. Oh, Steve, that is a beautiful oh, fish right there, yeah. man. That's what Great Lakes <laughs> walleye trolling is all about. Let me get him out of here so you can hold him up. It's a much nicer fish. Congratulations. That's what we call a fish o. That's pretty close to that 28 inch range right there. In Ohio waters, anything 28 or larger, it qualifies as a master angler. They are. That is an absolute beauty. So a yeah. mouthful of teeth. Oh yeah, they are they are big time predators. And that's why the crankbaits work so well here. Um, if we were to fillet this fish and look in his belly, I bet you a hundred dollar bill he's eating yellow perch. That's really? what they've been feeding on. And I'm talking big wow. yellow perch. So that's what it's all about, man. Right Congratulations. I shake your hand, but you seem to be a little yeah. bit preoccupied right now. So. Special considerations provided by Trailmaster Boat Trailers and Lakeside Motorsports. Special considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. The fish that we're going to catch today are largely going to be on crankbaits, and it's not just one single crankbait. There's actually four or five real popular crankbaits that we use here to get the job done day after day. The very first thing that we do before we set a crankbait is that we got to get them juiced up here. We like Procure, so put a little dab of Procure on this bait, we'll put it on there about every 20 to 30 minutes. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the bait back, and let me get this rod here. What we're going to do is we're going to set it back 50 feet. And there's a reason for this. The reason why we're going to set it back 50 feet, first thing I'm going to do here is zero up my line counter. And I'll cast this back about 50 feet or so. We're going to use a trolling method that's something that's brand spanking new. It's called the 50 plus 2 method. It's something pioneered by precision trolling data. And what it is, it's depth control. We want to get these baits right down close to the bottom, but we don't want them gouging into the bottom because we don't want to lose our valuable crankbaits. So the depth that we run these at is really critical. And right now we're trying to get them down about 39 feet. So in order to do that, I'm going to let out 50 foot of line, like I just said. And since this bait does not dive that deep on its own, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an offshore tackle snap weight. And this happens to be a two ounce version. So, and I'm going to just place it on the line here. And when you place it on the line, it can't come off. There's a little pet plastic pin in there, so it's on that line. It's not going to come off until I take it off. So now what I got to do is I got to deploy more leader. And this second group of leader, something we call the dropper, you can see the lines going out here. I'm going to let this one out to an additional um, total lead of 120 feet. So 120 feet back with a two ounce snap weight is getting this bait down about 39 feet, and that's what it's taken to get these fish to bite. So the 50 plus two method is absolutely a dynamite depth control method. So, okay, I got that there. Now if I wanted, I could just fish this as a flat line, but today, since we've got all this beautiful open water here, I got the wrong, grab the wrong planer board. I'm gonna grab a planer board here, offshore board. I'm just gonna spin the line a couple of turns here. And I'm going to place the front release right on those turns, just like that. And uh, I'll explain why in here in just a second. Then the second release, it's again one of those snap rate releases like was on the snap weight. It's there. So what's going to happen is this board's going to take that whole presentation out to the side. And when a fish bites, it's actually going to be able to trip the line from the front release. And the release will just dangle like this. And the reason why we want that board to trip is so, um, so we don't have the fish have a wall to pull against. So the planer board doesn't trip. When the fish runs, he can actually pull against the planer board and it may tear free. So the ability to release the planer board is pretty important for us. And it's as simple as just putting a couple of twists in the line and putting the release on the line just like that. It takes two seconds. And we got a fish on the outside board, so I guess we, we won't set this one just yet. Um, Jakers, I'm going to hand this over the top here. We got lines, lines everywhere. So. Steve, you up for another one? Sure. Okay. All I did was trip the board. Okay. Now he's all yours, my friend. Go back here. Yep. Ohio is interesting. Um, we're in May now, and so you can have six fish. If you'd have been here back in April, you'd have only been allowed to have four fish a day. Let's take a look here. Why the change? <sighs> The idea is to try to preserve some of those spawners, um, to try to keep back um, as much as possible as far as the harvest of the bigger fish. But uh, it's kind of a moot point because, oh, I'm gonna have to grab landing up there, sir. That's a pretty decent fish.
there we go. In between sides, basically, what you're looking at there. As I was talking about four fish, um, if we were in April, you'd only be allowed four fish, but since we we're in May, um, you're allowed up to six. But uh, this is about the size you threw back, so yeah. I'm guessing you want to do the same with this one? Yes, sir. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll do that just for you here. We'll get him unhooked here. You know, when you're in them, you're in them. And uh, <laughs> pretty, pretty quick right there. <laughs> I was helping you with your fish. I turned around and Jake hands me a rod and says, get, take this one, Dad. So. Nothing wrong with that. That's a decent fish. That's a decent fish. Look at this dorsal fin. He's only got half a dorsal fin. Wow. I don't know what, what happened there. I mean, he's not hanging around with the right crowd, I that's guess. Right. But, uh, um, but that's a pretty average fish right there. And what I'm seeing so far today that I like is that we're catching a number of different fish and we're catching them on different crankbaits. And that's indicative of, uh, you know, of, of a good bite. Um, we've been catching, we've got them on two different crankbaits now and I'm betting before the day is over, we're gonna catch them on four or five different crankbaits. So it's a beautiful thing. And look at that, man, he's got a lot of hooks in him. He ate that one good. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw, the only fish hooks made in America. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Hey, I'm Mark Romanak and I'm here with Garrett Koshak from Evanrude Outboards. We're here today to try to do a prop shootout to teach people how to get the best performance out of a multi-species boat like this StarCraft XDX. By using the right prop, you can really take this boat up and run into its full performance. The first thing you want to decide when picking your propeller is whether to go with an aluminum propeller or a stainless steel propeller. Stainless steel propellers are designed for performance in rough water, while your aluminum props are designed for your more affordable, shallow water running conditions. There are two different options available for stainless steel propellers, a three blade option or a four blade propeller. Your three blade propeller is gonna give you generally better top end speed, while your four blade is gonna give better mid range handling and a somewhat better hole shot. It all depends on what you're gonna be doing most of the time in your boat. When choosing your propeller, there are two very important numbers to pay attention to, the diameter and the pitch. The diameter is just what it sounds like, how wide across this propeller is. The pitch, however, is the distance that the boat will travel at speed for each revolution of the propeller. A 20 inch pitch propeller will theoretically travel 20 inches forward every revolution. The process of propping a boat is a trial and error experience. In the course of today's events, we're gonna put a multitude of props on this boat to find out exactly which one gives us the best performance. In this case, with Evanrude Props, we have four great choices to choose from. We have the Rebel, we have the Viper, we have the RX-4, and we have the Raker. In our experience, the Rebel and the RX-4 are very popular props for deep bees like we have behind us. If you're interested in propping a bass boat, the Raker is probably gonna be a better option. The goal in our testing today is to get our RPMs up as high as possible based on the manufacturer specs. In this case, with an Everroot G2, they're looking at between 5,000 and 6,000 RPMs. Well, we've had a chance to play with three different props now, and the first one we put on was an RX-4 20 pitch, and it really didn't turn out to be the right prop. We had a little bit of plowing, not nearly enough bow lift, and we over revved that prop. In other words, we spun it too fast. So we had plenty of speed, but too many hours, and so it was time for a different prop. The second prop we tried was a 23 pitch Rebel three blade prop. We had plenty of bow lift, great mid-range fuel economy, and cruising speeds, but what we didn't get was the top speed. We were about six miles an hour slower than the 20 pitch four blade. So it was time to look for a third prop. And so the third prop we tried was an RX-4 24. Now we really hit it. We had a prop that had great hole shot, good mid-range performance, great acceleration, and it ended up actually giving us the top speed plus the lowest RPMs that we had tested in the props that we had tested. So I'm pretty satisfied that the RX-4 24 is the prop for this boat. Well, I hope this Evanrude prop shootout gave you the confidence to go and play with your own props in your own boat. With a little bit of work and a little bit of effort, you'll be amazed at the performance you can get out of your boat. Well, it's important to understand when you have the right prop, you get the right performance. When you get good bow lift, what's happening is you're getting better fuel economy. Everybody likes fuel economy. You also get more speed and performance. When you put it all together, you just can't beat having the right prop on the right boat. Don't be afraid to stop and see your local dealer to see if they have other prop options that you can try out as well. 
Can we call this a tree shaker? Or are we, are we stealing somebody else's thunder? This is a rod tree that I'm taking this rod out of. And that old tree is shaking because we got us a walleye on. Let me take that clicker off. Steve, right there you go, sir. I'll let you take that one and I'll clear some more lines here. That's a solid fish. Nice fish. Raise your rod tip. Got him. Whoo, Steve. Nice. You might fish. have upgraded from your first bigger fish earlier today. That is a very, very nice fish. Very, very nice fish. Reef runner. That's the fourth bait that we've caught him on today. Yeah. You know, I talked about earlier that, you know, it's not just a specific bait, it's a, it's a variety of these mill style baits, but that's the fourth different bait that we've caught fish on. And uh, nice, real, real high quality walleye. So I know they get a little bit bigger on the Columbia River though, right? They do. Uh, but, but this is a good size. I mean, we get a lot that are small. You know, you gotta, you gotta weed through the small ones, you got the big ones, just well, right here. And, so. you know, and I'd like to think that maybe before the day's over, we'll get a, a, a truly big one as well, too. But I'm pretty happy with fish like that. That's a high quality fish. Anybody that doesn't like catching walleyes like that, I, I fear for them. There's something wrong with them. Oh, that's a great fish. <laughs> and Mark, how come you're going 50 feet when you're snapping the lead line versus 25? Or how did you come up with a 50? But well, the interesting thing is we knew we had to have a standard, okay? The other way to communicate these complicated trolling methods with people is to set up a standard that everybody can easily follow. So we interviewed a lot of fishermen and we asked them, when you're snap weight fishing, what lead lengths do you typically use? And we got some guys with 20 and some guys that say 30, but overwhelmingly 50 foot was the common lead length that people like. So we take that standard, 50 foot lead. Then we needed another standard. How big a snap weight do we put on? If we put a one ounce, it's gonna go a certain depth. If we do a two ounce, it's gonna go deeper. If we do a three ounce, it's gonna go deeper yet. So to build a standard, we decided to start with two ounces. So 50 foot lead plus two ounces, and then we can monitor what we call the dropper lead or the additional lead to get that bait dialed into specific depths. With that standard, if everybody stays to the standard, you're gonna have exactly the same data that we're producing. You're gonna be able to replicate it in your boat. And so um, our waters are fairly clear here. A little longer leader, 50 foot, seems to, uh, to work real well. And, uh, and so once the system is put together, I think that, uh, and people try it, they'll be amazed uh, how successful it is. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw, the only fish hooks made in America. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. On here. You know, when it comes to open water trolling, a line counter reel is probably the most essential piece of equipment that you're going to have on your boat. The reason for that is duplication. Not only are you going to use the Precision Trolling app to dial in those lead lengths and figure out exactly where those fish are, but you're going to need a line counter reel to do just that. You know, this is a Lexa 300 line counter reel that I have in my hand, and it's a nice low profile line counter. You know, the way that I look at line counter reels is they're definitely an investment. If you spend a little bit of extra money and you buy yourself some high quality line counter reels like these Lexas, they're going to last you a long time. You start buying more inexpensive line counter reels and they're just not going to have that longevity that you're looking for. So spend that little extra money and buy yourself some nice line counter reel setups for your boat. Sure, Procure is the only scent company that's made with 100% real bait. Uh, I'm not knocking the other scent companies, but they're some, uh, primarily synthetic. Or, uh, so we're actually buying uh, 42 different baits across U.S., having them flash frozen and shipped to Salem, Oregon, and then process them either for the oil or for the super gel. Uh, so a lot more work was, is involved in doing that, but it just makes for a, a much better product. Okay. 12 feet. I'm trying to figure out where he's at here. Throw your ride to the left in there, Steve. Oh boy, he's just barely hooked. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> you got a rabbit's foot in your pocket, yeah, my friend. Yeah. The fish was barely hooked, buddy. Right he came on. in the bag. 
Well, one of the things we haven't elaborated on, you know, obviously we're using Procure and it's been very successful in helping us catch fish, but there's more to it. And to be honest with you, Steve, when we first started using the scent products, we weren't having a lot of success. It wasn't until we visited with you folks and learned that we weren't applying it properly. And the mistake that we were making is we were putting it on lures that were already contaminated with foreign orders. So once you taught us that it was important to clean the lures before you apply the scent, it was like a light bulb went off and everything started clicking for us. So if you're using scent and you're not having success for it, you might want to talk about doing a cleaning regimen on your lures before you apply the scent. What I do with my lures is at the end of the day or the, usually when I'm done fishing, I'll take all my lures and I'll put them in a quart jar that's half full of liquid WD-40 and just shake it up for 15 or 20 seconds. And I pull them out and I hit them with, a, with my wash down pump. And that WD-40 breaks down the gel base and then they're completely odorless when they dry. There's, uh, if you're not comfortable with that, we do have the hand lure soap and you can, you can apply that to them with a toothbrush and put them a little more leg work into it and scrub them down with that. Uh, at least if you start out clean and then if you're putting like gizzard shad on it, it's going to smell like a gizzard shad. But if it's, if it's had three different scents on it and you're going to find another one, you're cross-contaminating scents and, and it's all foreign and it just doesn't make proper sense of the fish. So. Like I said, for us, you know, once we started doing it right, um, it was amazing the success that we were having. And now it's uh, it's just part of our daily regimen. We, uh, we clean our lures before we fish them, and then we grease them up with Procure, and then at the end of the day, we gotta clean them again because they're all, they're all greased up. But it's a regimen that works if you do it correctly. Very true. Closed captioning provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports dealer. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Company, Evan Rood Outboards, Starcraft Marine, Cisco Fishing Systems, Yakima Bait, Jay's Sporting Goods, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Move Seats, Lawrence Electronics, and by Precision Trolling Data. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. Look at that. That's a walleye on a stick. Yeah. A stick bait.